Bravo.
with the praise. And as they had praise, they called upon their Lord. And as they called upon the Lord, yes. the walls fell down. The yes. shackles were loose. Yes. 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 To get into that mindset that your yes. praise yes. is yes. your weapon. Yes. The yes. is not your yes. Yes. But it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Yes. 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 He will be found. Yes. And as he found, he will deliver. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. The elders excited this morning, amen. Yes. Hallelujah, we should be excited when we get the opportunity to lift yes. up the name of yes. Jesus. And yes. so we glory in him this morning, yes. hallelujah, hallelujah. And we had a set set of songs, but you know, as I've been going through this week and looking at the weather and looking at things, you know the song came to make Jesus be a fence. Yes. Jesus be my protection and be my direction yes. all around me, amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we just sing just a little bit of that? Yes. Jesus.
says, I'm the same God, and I change not. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And that's a blessing in itself. Yeah. Yeah. We know some folks that you, know, you never know how they're going to be acting around you. You, know, so you talk with them five or ten minutes, but you can talk to Jesus anytime. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he's the same God. Yes, Lord. So I'm appreciative that we can serve a God that we can proclaim. He's an all-time God. He's an awesome God. He's a right now God. in the community here at Embrace Hope. Thank you for visiting us this morning. We begin to move along with God has placed in our hearts. He never came to us this morning. I believe that this morning around 1.32 o'clock even right now. And the Lord is doing something to me. I don't understand where he's taking me, but he's taking me somewhere. And I just want to look at my life. What's doing to me in the name of Jesus. God has been here lately putting me into the presence of some very influential people, some very rich people, some people that's really leaning towards embrace hope to do the things that we need to be done. And so thank you, God for what you're about to do even in this house. So as I keep saying, the month of August is the eighth month and it's a completion. God says what I started in the first beginning in January, most of it I'm going to complete in August, but I still have additional months that I'm going to linger on the blessing. So saints, get ready. Get ready. Proclaim yours. Proclaim yours. Proclaim yours. Don't be afraid to say, Lord, me too. You said you was going to bless Abraham. Me too. You're going to bless Isaac. Me too, Lord. I'm waiting on my blessing too. So just keep on staying in there. You're not going wrong. You're not off track. God has just delayed it. He just didn't give it to you yet, but it's coming. So I want you to just stay encouraged and realize that the God you serve, he does hear you. He's going to work it out for you in the name yeah, yeah. of Jesus. Uh, uh, just a little announcement before we go forth. Uh, it's called the Refuge Community Church. We're all from Cedar Creek area. And I begin to talk with this pastor as we begin to He began to show me how God is building up his church. And I went inside the church. It was beautiful. And his colors is purple and gold. 
And I begin to say, God, thank you for showing me some things uh, that he's doing over here because I know our day is coming. Oh, yeah. But the thing that really blessed me is one of his members was taking a picture of the people singing uh, up front. And you can see in that picture where there was a gleaming cross and it had the illumination of Christ all over it. And when she snapped that picture, that cross appeared in the picture. And there was no one cropping that in. It was no one trying to make that happen, but it was a lightning that God allowed his cross to show. And I was like, man, that's awesome. What a blessing that Christ has shown me that he's in this place with me. He is with us. He is with us. He is with us. So if you would, please turn in your Bibles to Psalms 107. Let's go to verses in chapter 107. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory to your name. We're in the book of Psalms. Go to number five of the book of Psalms. Psalms 107. We, we're going to go from verses 1 through verses 16. If the Lord says the same. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're in the book of Psalms. Go to chapter 107. We're going to go from verses 1 through verses 16. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you this morning. God, this atmosphere is ready for you now. We burn up the sin atmosphere right now. In the name of Jesus, let nothing come through that door, God, that's going to prevent and stop your word right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, you are so worthy to be praised. So I decrease as you increase. Use me now, God, to, to preach what you downloaded into my heart and my spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I had a texture in the middle of the week that says, you know what, I'm still on fire from what you did. Sometimes we go through uh, trials and tribulations and situations yeah, where yeah. we don't quite understand what we're going through. But she let us know that if you commit your work to the Lord, he, he going to shake that devil loose and yeah. get him off of you. Yeah. So, yeah. you pastor, thank you for what you've done. It, it helped me out tremendously yeah. in the name of Jesus. Because there's trying times happening right now, saints. Uh, and, and we got to make let Satan realize that we serve a God that cares about our yeah. every need. Yeah. Yes, he will. We're in the book of Psalms, chapter uh, 107. We're going to go from verses 1 through 16. I want to read that first part to you. Then I want to give you my title. Verses 1 through 3 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. That, that alone right there would preach for the rest of the day. <laughs> uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from the hands of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. And as I lay flat on the floor with my arms stretched out last night, uh, stammering in tongues, trying to understand uh, what he was trying to tell me, he gave me the title is, What Makes You Think I Don't Hear You? What makes you think that I don't hear you? I begin to, to bring some things to him that I'm going through, bring some things to him that I, I want to happen, and bring some things to him that I'm longing to happen here, uh, and bring hope to the members of Embrace Hope. There's some things I want, some cages I want to shake, some things I want to drop off the members of Embrace Hope. But he says, what makes you think I don't hear you? 
And so he began to take me back to the children of Israel, which sent us to where we are in the book of Psalms, where he had the children of Israel, and there was over in Israel, there was over in Egypt, and as they began to move around in Egypt, they were had a taskmaster. This taskmaster would take the material from them, but still require the same measure of movement. This taskmaster had them living in pits, some uh, uh, one on top of the other trying to figure it out, some sleeping by day and some sleeping by night and, and in places that they dwell in was mud. that they was in, they thought God didn't hear them. They thought God cared nothing about them. They thought Jesus was going to do nothing about the situation that they had gotten themselves into. Some of us are in the same situation right now, even though you're not living in a hut, and even though you're not living in a situation that's so challenging to you that you don't understand what's going on. But, 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 but because you've been praying and he has not answered your prayers, you're wondering, does God really hear me? And now you're reaching out to this one you think is connected to God. And you're reaching out to that one you think is better connected to God and saying, hey, pray for me because obviously God's not hearing me because I'm praying, but he has not Bless me, but you got to understand that the God you serve, he hears you. Amen. And not only does he hear you, but he's doing something about what you're asking him. And he's going to move in such a way that he blessed the children of Israel. And so he raised, he raised his servant, and he sent his servant out. He said, hey, I want you to go take my people from the hands of this taskmaster because I heard their prayer, and I heard their cry, and I see what they're going through. So I want you to go in, and I want you to pull my people out of there. But, but see, the, when he began to, to, to talk to his servant, his servant didn't think that he was up to the task. The servant didn't want to go in anyhow and pull these people out of a situation that they've been crying to God for because they were in a catastrophic situation. The water was bad. The food was was very, very little, very, very little, very, very little. And some of them lost so much weight because of the food. And the father would give his portion to his children because he knew that he wanted them to grow up a little bit more. He would eat. And then the mother would ration her portion given to the church because they wanted the children to grow up and be healthy but but there was a plenish there was a replenishing of the spirit with the father replenishing of the spirit with the mother and as they begin to cry out God begin to say go I hear what my people are going through pull them out of this situation because I need for them to understand that I am a God that cares not only do I care but I'm a God that hears what they're going through and then the Bible says that when he went in and tried to pull the people from this situation, this catastrophic situation, Pharaoh's heart became hardened. Some of us, God has prepared you to go into a situation right now to begin to move and, 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 and saturate that situation with your anointing. But because you're too afraid, because the situation looks too horrendous, because the things that you're about to walk into, you think you're not ready. But you can hear the voice of the Lord saying, go, go, now is the time to go. Now is the time to saturate that, that situation, saturate that moment with the anointing that I've already placed inside of you. But some of us are just like Moses saying, hey, God, I can't go because I don't have what it takes to go. But God simply says, you have what it takes. Get these to the land where I need to show you a land flowing, the land flowing, a land flowing, get there. But some of us don't move. We don't think that God is hearing our prayers. So the Bible says that they wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to the well and they went through the wilderness and they was moving through the wilderness because God, so powerful that he wanted to show them that he was in their lives, he moved them out of their heart's place. God. He moved them out of the harsh place and he said, I'm going to show you a cloud by day and I'm going to send fire by night because I want you to understand I'm going to move you out of your harsh place. 
to a place where I'm going to show you, and I need for you to go through this place. Some of us are in our uh, in our wetlands right now. Some of us are in our wilderness right now. Some of us are in our wetlands right now. You know, don't too many good things grow in a wetland. It's just miserable. But in this wilderness, God wants you to understand that they wandered in the wilderness in a desolate way because we. wander off, we always find ourselves in a wilderness experience. Because in this wilderness experience, you think God doesn't hear you. You think your prayers is not being answered. Every time you hear one thing, here comes ten more. Won't go do this no more. Everything is coming against you. You are in your wilderness. But the Bible says not only were they in their wilderness, but they wandered in this wilderness for a long period of time. But they found no city to the well in. And when they was in the wilderness, the Bible says they got hungry and thirsty, and their souls fainted in them because they was hungry and they didn't see anything. They was thirsty. The Bible says that they so begin to faint. They begin to think that the God that brought them out of the Clouds by day, fire by night, just brought them out there and left them for whomever felt the need to attack them. Some of us are feeling the same way. You feel like you got saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, been reading your word, been crying out to the Lord, but yet still something is potentially happening. And you've been worried about some situations. Nobody's ridicule you about what you're going through, but yet you're going through a situation now because you think God doesn't hear, but your prayer life is getting shorter because my praise not hearing me. I read. The Bible knows just let me do a daily devotion. I don't really need to read the Bible. Just let me do a daily devotion, and that will suffice my reading to God. And I do a five or six minute prayer to God, and then I'm on my way because my, my soul is fainting. I'm thirsty and I'm hungry. And it seems like every door that I go to is shut. Everyone I try to talk to, they do not give me what I need in order to pull my mind mentally out of the situation that I'm in. So I got to call another person who I think will mentally help me through this situation. I don't really need the finances and I don't really need the, 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 the physical help. But I just need a mental a mental upbringing. And I, and I call sister so-and-so, but sister so-and-so really didn't answer. So I'm going to call brother so-and-so because I think brother so-and-so is close to God. And, I, and I'm calling everybody, but I'm not taking it to God. I'm calling everybody because I think if I call them, they'll mentally help me get myself together, get me out of this mental rut, and pull me where I need to be. But God sent me here to ask you, what do you think I don't hear you? What do you think I'm not listening to you? To the things that you're going through, what's putting you in the direction that you hurt. God says, I am the painkiller. Whatever the pain is, I kill that for you. But you got to come to me all. And take my yoke and learn from me, but my yoke is easy. But my, my burden is like God says, I am He. Yes. Over here in Psalms uh, chapter 107 and verse 5 says, says they was hungry and thirsty, and their soul fainted in them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their troubles. Thank you, God. Yes. They cried out to the Lord in their troubles. They cried out to God in their troubles. They didn't take it to Facebook. They didn't take it to Instagram. They didn't take it to Aunt whoever, her brother so and so. The Bible says it here in Psalms 107 and verse 6, they cried out to the Lord in their troubles. And when they cried out to them, the Bible says he delivered them out of their distress. Yes, Lord. When you say, Pastor, I've been crying out to the Lord, and I'm still in this situation. Are you crying out fervently with the faith that whatsoever I ask for in prayer and believe it, I shall receive it? 
or are you looking at Jesus like a microwave? When I plug in the numbers at the end of that beep, I need what I've been asking him for. So some of us are in a microwave generation that we need this thing to happen right now. But you don't understand the God you serve, he's cultivating you from wherever he's getting ready to send you. So now, you know, like grandmama used to have that skillet, and when she put that thing in the skillet, and she's, she's stirring, and she's saving it, and she's doing the right thing, that when that food hits that belly, it's going to stay in there. You can smell the aroma throughout the whole house. Some of the neighbors, it's like, well, what in the world is she cooking over there? But she's stirring, and she's brewing, and she's stirring. But see, that's how God is doing some of us. He's yes. staring you. He's, yes. he's grooming you. He's, he's getting you ready for when he pours you on that plate of righteousness, yes. when he pours you on that plate of goodness, yes. when he pours you on that plate of mercy, yes. when he pours you on that plate of grace, yes. you are ready to be consumed by the yes. fire of God. But when I put that thing in the microwave, it has yes. a quickness about it that the taste is not savory. Yes. It's just hot enough to consume, but it's still not good for you. Some of us are in a microwave generation when it comes to God. But we serve a God of strategy. And this God says that when they cry out to him, he delivered them out of their stress. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city for a habitation. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing souls and filled the hungry souls with goodness. But watch this. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadows of death, bound in afflictions and iron, he set them free. Those who sat in darkness and the death, those who sat in darkness and in the shadows of death, bound in afflictions and iron. Some of us right now are set in darkness. You're set in darkness in your thoughts. Set in darkness in your process. Set in darkness trying to get mobile through what's going on. You're set in darkness because God has sent you light. But it seems like everything you're going to do is just falling apart. Pastor, one thing behind the other is just falling apart. And I, I go to the doctor. He's not really telling me what I want to hear. And I'm trying to do the best thing that I can do, Pastor. Uh, you give me one pill and then give me another pill, Pastor. Now, and I, I'm not against the pills, thanks. Hear me. I'm not against the pills. But what I am against is you serve a God that's going to pull you out of this situation because God said when they cried out to him, he delivered them out of their troubles. The children of Israel, they begin to cry out to God. And, and God sent in Moses and said, pull my people out of this situation because I heard their cry. I heard the memory. I see what they're going through. I understand. You've got to understand this. COVID-19 is not the first pandemic that hit this world. And God pulled us out of this situation. Wait, let me wake you up. God sent plagues on his own to the people that would not obey him and hear what he had to say. So he had to send a plague to wake them up. Some of us, God had to send a plague in your life to wake you up and make you understand, I am thee. I am God and I will pull you out of this situation. Some of us have got the rich we ever been in our life in this pandemic. Some of us have received some things that we've never been able to reach before in this pandemic. God has used this pandemic to strengthen and his people, and those that keep their eyes on Jesus, keep their eyes on the prize. God said, I will strengthen you, and I will work this thing out, and I will make this thing happen for you in this pandemic. I don't want you to understand this thing. I don't, I don't understand why we, as Christian people, because this pandemic has happened, we are falling off from the church, don't want to read the Bible, don't want to go the way around the sex, because we don't think that the God we serve. But you got to understand, this it's nothing new under the sun of God. God says there's nothing new according to Ecclesiastes under the sun. So if there's nothing new, you have been appointed for a time such as this to render the anointing inside of you so that God can bless you. Amen. Amen. So if you're going through something, it's because God is preparing you for the next level. Amen. You already been through this level. He's preparing you for the next level in the name of Jesus. But the people, uh, some, he said, they was bound in afflictions and irons. You see, when your mind gets so locked on something, 
and you refuse to move, you're locked just like you're locked in iron. You refuse to move, you're locked in iron. They're shaking you saying, hey, let's go to Bible study. I don't feel like it. You're locked in iron. So, so the Lord has brought this pandemic to make it easier for you that you can sit in your living room and look at the, 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 the elders doing a good job with Bible study. But because some of you still won't even turn that thing on, your mind is locked in iron because at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, you find other stuff to do. But he's made it easy for you because our mind is so locked in affliction and locked in iron that we too worried about what Trump is doing more so than worried about what God is doing. We too worried about him. We too worried about what try to keep your eyes on Jesus because God is about to move some things in his atmosphere. And I don't want us to miss the beat because you're so caught up in your afflictions and you're so caught up in iron that you're going to miss where God is trying to bless you. You're going to miss where God is trying to take you. The Bible tells us in uh, uh, Jeremiah the 10th chapter that you're going to be so caught up that you, you're going to miss, you're going to miss when the heat comes, that you're so caught up in things that you're going to miss when God begins to bless you because you're caught up in your afflictions and you're caught up in your honor. These people, these people that God has used fire by night and clouds by day to bring them out of their situation and then, and they help them to get to a place, a place that with abundance. I mean, but because when they got across that river, they begin to say, hey, you brought us to a place that has no water. You brought us to a place now we're thirsty. Now, now, now there's no food, but what's going on with us? And so we talk about the children of Israel, but what about you? What have God taken you out of? And what have God placed you at right now? I want you to understand that the God you serve, he's so powerful that he woke you up this morning. Not only did he wake you up, but he clothed you in your right mind. And when he, when he did that, he, he put doubt inside of you. He put memories inside of you. He put vision inside of you. He moved you like never before. That's the God you serve. But, but you can hear him. He said, they're not listening to me, my son, because I I came to uh, three Sundays ago and I asked a question. Who are you really serving? And so because of that, he sent me here today to ask you, what makes you think I don't hear you? What makes you think I don't listen to you? What makes you think I'm not doing what you need for me to do? And so verse 11 says, because they rebelled against the word of God. God. And despite the counsel of the most high, they begin to say, you know, I ain't reading about it no more. I ain't really worried about that no more, Pastor, because I believe that where I'm at now is where I'm going to stay. I believe that the finances that I have now are going to be right there. So, I, so, so, so you got to understand, I'm locked here, Pastor. My bills are getting paid and things are happening. I'm locked here. But you understand, God is taking you for the next step for the next level. He's trying to work this thing out for you. And some of us, are, we're so worried about that they don't stop the unemployment checks that you can't really make ends meet like you think you should. And, and, and they don't stop the Medicaid and the Medicare to do the things that they would used to do. So, 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 so you, you, you're bound now to think that I'm so sick I can't even buy my medicine and I can't do this with the things that I have, but you're not understanding. That Medicaid and that employment check is not what kept you. God kept you. And if he kept you then, he's going to keep you now. He, he's going to move on you. He, he's taking some things from you that was your crutch. Because he wants you to understand, let me be your leaning post. Let me be your crutch. Lean on me. Call on me. Let me work this thing out for you. And then watch me work. Because what I place in my hand, no man shall be able to reverse. So we got to get this thing right. We got to get out of that mind of affliction. We got to get out of that mind of iron. And realize that the God you serve, he hears you. And he's working it out for you. And I said, thank you, God, because he says, therefore, he brought them down. He brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down and there was none to help because they would not be obedient to God. God allowed hard labor to happen to him. He, he allowed this thing to happen to him because sometimes you won't pray God, pray to God until the, the road gets rough. 
Sometimes you won't pray to God until you back, get up against the wall. Sometimes you won't ask God to come into your situation until you see like there's no way out. But that's not the only time we should be praising God. Right. We should be giving him praise regardless. We should be giving him praise in the morning. Praise during the evening. Praise during your time. You should be able to take 10 minutes back from whatever you're doing and say, God, I just thank you for allowing me to be here today. Thank you for allowing me to, to be blessed today, God. I look forward to what you're trying to take me. Thank you, God. God is healing us and he wants to give us more and he wants to bless us and so they fall down and not only did they fall down but there was nobody to help them when they did fall because if God is who can you run to <laughs> he said when they listen to me when they realize I hear them when they render their heart due to me he said Verse 14, he brought them out of darkness in the shadow of death, and he broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord yes. for his goodness. Yes. So everything that had us bound, everything that has us locked down, everything that had us handcuffed, still got us handcuffed, God says, I'm breaking you loose from that chain. I'm breaking you loose from that bondage. I'm breaking you loose from what has you down. I'm breaking you loose from that mindset, that affliction mindset that I am breaking. You loose children of Israel. I gave you a land floored with milk and honey. Get there so you can be blessed. Stop worrying about where you came from and look at where you're going. Say that again, Pastor. Stop worrying from where you came from. From and look at where you're going. He said, I'll go before you and I'll make the crooked places straight. He said over there, he said in the Hebrews, and he also said all the way back in F S Exodus, he says, tell my people to stop crying to me, but go forward. He wants us to go forward, saints, because he says, what I place inside of you will work. Tell my people to stop crying out to me and go forward because they have inside of them everything they need in order to make it happen, in order to make it work. You pray, you keep praying. You crying out to the Lord, keep crying. You raising your hand, keep raising. You reading the word, keep reading. Why? Because everything you do, it's going to make you better when you get to that next level. It's going to make you better when you get to that next dimension because you are moving. You can't stay here. And you got to understand this world is moving. You're norm last year is certainly not your norm this year because God is blessing you. God is moving you. So you got to be able to move. You got to be able to adjust. You got to be able to be versatile to do the things that God wants you to do because if you stay stuck in the mud like last year, you're going to miss where God is going to take you for next year. God is grooming us, saints. Now watch this. COVID-19 pandemic will it is going to go away. It is going to move out. It is going to go away. But did you make the most of this virus, this pandemic, yes. the praying of God, the fasting of God, the yearning to God, did you make the most of it while it was yet upon you? Can you imagine grasshopper that was sent by God, but God pulled him back when he thought we was ready to go to the next level. Good God. Saints, we are ready. We just got to stay in there. He said, oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken yes, the Lord. gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Good God. That's a powerful God. Yes, Let me read that to you again so, so you can hear what, what he said. Psalms 107, uh, verses 16 says, for he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. That's the God that we serve. There is nothing too powerful for him to penetrate. <laughs> there is nothing too powerful for him to break in two. There is nothing too powerful for him to look down in and snatch me and you out of. There's nothing so powerful that he can't go in there and eradicate it, move it out of the way, kick it to the side, and pull me and you out of there, and shake me and you off, and say, get back in the race. There's nothing so powerful that God can't step into. He can't break it off. He can't move it out of your way. 
Yes. For the God that you serve, I like to say that you pass, I like to say it because you play it, I like to say it. We serve a God that has never lost a battle. Yes. And so he never yes. lost a battle. Why are we worrying about the battle that you're currently in? Why are you worrying about that? Can you hear him talking to you? He says, does, does my people hear me? Are they hearing what I'm saying? Because I want you to understand God is talking to each and every one of us. Some of us don't want to do it because it's going to take you out of your comfort zone. Some of you don't want to do it because it might make you stay up, sleep just a little, stay up and read just a little while longer. You don't want to do it because you got to stay on your knees and pray just a little while longer. I remember when First Lady and I was first, you know, looking at each other with Google eyes and, you know, we were trying to move in a direction, you know. Uh, and I would say, okay, God, this is one for me. He said, yeah. He said, okay, I want you to read his word 10 minutes. I want you to pray for 10 minutes. And then he says, I'm going to bless you mightily. And I said, oh, Lord. Okay, I'm going to read his word 10 minutes. So I called everybody that I thought was, you know, Christian enough to answer me. And everyone else said, son, uh, that's between you and God. You got to, you, you know it's God. God is not, devil is not going to tell you to read the word of God. And so I, I, I seemed like 10 minutes was so long since I would set my stopwatch and I'm praying and I keep on saying the same thing over and over and over. Oh, no, no. And the thing will go up. Ooh. But it seemed like it was 30 minutes later. 10 minutes became like an hour. Good God. And then you want me to, to pray? And then you want me to read for 10 minutes? And that's all the Lord was requiring of me. Just to read 10 minutes and just to pray 10 minutes. And I could, it seemed like every day, oh, Lord, I got to count that time. Because, you know, I want to be obedient. But at the same time, I knew that this 10 minutes was going to take something out of me. Well, after 30 days of doing that, I mean, first lady was trying to look for a house, and every, we probably went through Panville looking at about 100 houses, and none, none didn't appear to us. It didn't appear to us. It didn't appear to us. And then, after the 30 day mark was over, she came home from the credit union. She said, Hey, we don't have credit. say about it? We touched hands, touched and agreed, and prayed, and the Lord directed us right to a person. The very house that we were looking for. A pandemic, foreclosure, can't pay the mortgage, nothing has put us out where God has placed us. And 20 years later, we're still there looking good. In these last 90 days, well, maybe 120 of April, 120 days. God has did so much to that house that I'm stepping back saying, good God, do I live here where God has placed some things. He began to move some things. He began to rework some things. He got the house looking beautiful. And I'm like, good God. And he put me, he gave me the strength to go in and do things to that house I've never done before. But because he had the power of my mind and, and I began to yield to him and says, God, help me to do the things that I'm about to do. He would show me how to do it. And, it would, and for the average person, they say, you need to go somewhere and get some sleep. But because God was moving me, he didn't want me to sleep yet because I had a task that need to be completed. Why am I telling you all of this? Because some of us have gotten so complacent that we think that we're praying but God doesn't hear us. And we think that we've been calling out for God for a long time but he's not going to move. We think that our health is not going to get healed. But I want you to understand, you got to hear from God. And when you begin to hear from God, sometimes when you hear from God, it's not going to be comfortable. obedient to what he asked me to do, he's still blessing me from that 20 years later. Oh, y'all don't get it. 20 years later, when I was obedient to then for 30 days, he's said, bless me, 20 years later. And the good thing about it is he's making it better and better and better. What am I telling you? It's going to be uncomfortable for you right now to do what God is asking for you to do. But guess what? It's going to make you better. He's going to raise you higher. And it's going to continue to bless you like never before. But he said, do my people hear me? Talking to them. Why won't they do what I'm asking of them? You don't have to place it on Facebook. You don't have to place it on Instagram and tell your next friend. 
Your BFF doesn't matter in this situation. But what does matter is your relationship with your God. If you call on him, he'll hear you. What makes you think I don't hear you, says the Lord? What makes you think I don't care about you? What makes you think I won't bless you? What makes you think I won't work it out? What makes you think I won't move like never before? What makes you think I won't raise you up? Well, I raised you up this morning, put you in your right mind. That thing that you were dealing with just last month, you thought was going to take you out. I intervened and it didn't. He's still here today. The very thing that you thought was going to cripple you, I pulled you off of that operating table. The thing that you said was going to take your sight, I restored your sight. I gave you back your vision. I put running in your limbs and I made some things happen to you that nobody else could have done but me. But because you don't want to hear me and you don't want to listen to me, you think that I don't listen to you. I am listening to you. He said, I brought you for a price. Yeah. And if I paid for you, that means I own you. That means you are precious to me. Yeah. So the Bible says we were wonderfully made. Yeah. And because we were wonderfully made, he says, now, because I love you, he says, and because you were made like me, he says, Luke 9 and 2, 9, 1 and 2, he says, I'm going to give you the power, like yeah. me, yeah. to cast out demons, yeah. lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. He said, I'm going to give you that kind of power. And not only I'm going to give you that kind of power, he said, but the vipers are going to spite you, but they won't do nothing. People are going to come against you, but I'll come against them. Yeah. They're going to try to take you down, but I'll raise you up. Yeah. They're going to steal from you, but Isaiah 61 says, for your shame, I'm going to give you another portion of what they have taken from yeah. you. You got to hear me this morning, Saints, that the God you serve, he yeah. is blessing you. You, but he wants you to listen to him as he begins to work on you, as he begins to move you, as he begins to strengthen you. He sent me here this morning and says, hey, tell my people, tell my people, tell them. As I laid on the floor last night, stammering in the speaking of tongues, he said, tell my people, I'm coming. I'm coming. And not only am I coming, he said, but I'm coming to heal I'm coming to bring prosperity. I'm coming to bring joy. I'm coming to bring out of darkness. I'm coming to break the chains that had a bound. I'm coming to break the affliction of mind. I'm coming to bring back the things that were stolen from them. I'm coming to bring the doctors and turn them into light. And tell my people, not only am I coming, but I'm coming quickly. I'm coming quickly. If they hear me and do what I told them to do, I'm coming quickly. He said, and when I show up, hard not your heart, because I am going to bless you. I do hear you. I am going to work it out. I'm going to heal your body. I'm going to strengthen your every need. I see what you're going through. And Micah, I pull the children of Israel out of Egypt. I'm pulling you out of your wilderness. You shall drink water in your parched place. Your river shall overflow. Rivers of living water shall begin to flow out of your belly. Your things will change. Your ideals will change. Your mind will change. Your thought process is going to change. Because I change not. Yes. So I got to bring you with me. Yes, God. Yes. Send the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. He says, tell my people. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Tell my people. Yes. What makes them think I only hear them? Mm. Ask them, son. Ask them. What makes you think he's a my God. To my God. What makes you think he can hear you? What, because you got a bill? You got a little sickness in your body? Yeah. What, what, because the bill's not getting paid like you think? What makes up your unemployment check? What, what makes you think that the God that you serve is for healing you? Because you feel like he hasn't blessed you with what you're asking for. What makes you think that he's not listening to you? Why do you think you got to call everybody and tell everybody your business? But had told it to God. Yet. My God, my God. Why you feel like you gotta do that? Pastor, this has happened to me. And Pastor, and now you said God's permission. And they told you to bring it to me so me and you can touch it and get it. Mm -hmm. Or am I the first one you're telling? That God. Because I got to go my tell God. God how you feel about Him. Uh, oh, y'all ain't got to go. He said, But tell my people. I'm coming and I'm bringing prosperity. I'm bringing prosperity, saints. 
He says, I'm coming and I'm bringing prosperity. Saints, I want you to hear what I'm telling you this morning. Yeah, I want you to yeah. hear. I, I, I wanted to go to sleep last night at 2 o'clock, but, but he was shaking me. He said, tell, tell my people I'm coming with prosperity. Not only he said, I will fulfill what I said I was going to do. Thank he you. said, I will fulfill Hallelujah. it. And I could hear resonating in my spirit while he was talking yes. to me. Hebrews 10.35 says, don't you lose your confidence yes, in me, which bring great reward and recompense. Don't you lose your confidence in me. He says, my people, are you hearing me? Don't yes. you lose your confidence in me. Yes, and I begin to cry out to the Lord as tears begin to run out of my eyes because I could see how God is going to bless us so mightily, saints, that you will be able to do what I've been wanting to do for the longest is to go into a grocery store and sit at that cash register for hours and everybody to come through there just pay for their groceries. That's how I want the Lord to bless me. And right now, I got some things in the works, saints, that when God bless me, I will have the ability to do just that. So I got to cry out to the Lord. I can't turn around now because if I go back from whence I came, I believe God is going to take my life. I'm so sold out now. I'm so, so into this thing now that I can't hear the, the rhetoric of be negative towards God. I can't do it because I know where he brought me from. Yeah, Lord. I know the strings that he broke. Yeah. I know the chains that he ripped apart yeah. from us. Yeah. And I know the bars that he opened up and let us yeah. walk through. Yeah. I thank you, God, for who you are. Yeah. I thank you, God, for what you've done. Yeah. It was by no strength of ours. You couldn't talk your way out of some of the situations yeah. that God had purposed you to come through. Yeah. But because he was God. Yeah. And because he had a plan for your life. Yeah. According to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said, I know the plans that I have for you. Your plans were to be locked down tight somewhere. Your plans were to be in some hospital room forever. Your plans were not to be there, but your plans were to be here today for me to tell you he hears what you're going through, saints. And he is going to bless you. He is going to work it out. He has already. He woke you up this morning and closed in your right mind. The God that you serve. Yeah. He sent me here to tell him. He says, tell him, son, I'm coming. All right. And I'm Thank coming you, with Lord. prosperity. Thank, Thank you, God, yeah. for what you've done. Tell him, tell him, tell him. He says, tell him, I'm coming. Thank and you. I'm coming with prosperity. Oh, yeah. He started to bless even more. Yeah. Since this pandemic has happened, so much never before. I haven't had it in a long time. In a pandemic. How can that be? God is blessing us. Yeah. He's working it out. And some of you are the same way. He's sending finances through your hands. So that you can be a blessing to somebody else. Be a blessing to someone else. Do yeah. what God has purposed you to do. Yeah. God is speaking to you and saying, hey, bless that sister. Bless that brother. And he was you say, you know what? I'm going to do it, God. And some of what he's asking of you to do is, is a hard thing because it's taking enough from you that hurts. But you don't understand. It hurts now. But you're going to rejoice with him. Thank yes. God about yes. it. He says, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming with prosperity. I'm opening up doors that you've never had, that you was already closed. Uh, I'm moving in a direction like never before. God is opening up doors for us, saints, that you were able to walk in. And you will be able to walk in your abilities, your anointing, what he has blessed you in. is already there waiting on you that when you step into it, you're going to be a game changer. And when you become a game changer, things begin to happen for you. People are going to begin to look for you. They're going to begin to reach out for you. They're going to begin to call on you. Why? Because you are in your zone and you are in your element to receive. Yeah. Because God says, I'm coming. Yeah. And I bring with me prosperity. Hallelujah. Thank I bring you, Lord. with me yeah. prosperity. Yeah. I want you to hear this as I close. Moses got caught up with the anger of the people. That the Bible says he told him to do something and he didn't do what God said to do. Because he got caught up, saints. He got caught up in the rhetoric of the people. So God said, Moses, come here. Look over and see where you could have been going. Look over, Moses. And I 
can imagine Moses part of it. How he could look at the promise land and not get there. He got two and a half million people he was bringing and dragging and trying to get there. And just to get to where God was going to take him, God took him to the lid and says, look, you can't go there. You can't get there, Moses. Because you was disobedient. Saints, some of us, God has used you to move the people. But don't get caught up in the rhetoric. Don't get caught up in the fussing. Don't get caught up in the anxiety. Don't get caught up in what's coming to you. But get caught up in moving and look and say, okay, God, I'm ready to step into where you're trying to take me. Yes, yes. He said, Moses, I raised you to bring the people to Egypt. But you're not worthy to go there. Good God. Yes. I don't want us to be going through this Christianity process. that you will repent that and then you will just submit that to God you will be saved and all of the blessings that I've talked about today would be yours to receive in the name of Jesus if you said that then you want a Bible believing church and you're close to us we're at 53 uh, 5613 Hope Mills Road come on down and hang out with us but if you're not just send us a note that says hey pastor we heard what you said and we did what you asked in the name of Jesus so thank you I've been receiving I've been receiving emails and texts about people that's just texting me and saying, Pastor, thank you for what you've done. Thank you. So keep on, keep on, keep on flooding me to the internet with your messages. I, I truly appreciate it in the name of Jesus. And so now, those of you that's here, we're just gonna do an altar call. If you would just stand where you are, stand where you are, you will be. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you where you are right now, Father. The people listening by internet and those that are standing here with me. I thank you, God, for what you've done and how you're going to bless us like never before. God, I, as I reach out my hand, God, I want to allow the anointing to flow through this place. Let it flow like never before. God, this is your house. God, come in and then use the well in here like never before. In the name of Jesus and God, if we did something that was rebelling against you, we repent of it right now. In the name of Jesus and God, move us like never before. So, God, I thank you that you're sending prosperity in this place. You're sending prosperity in your people, even their jobs, God. You're sending prosperity to their bodies. You're sending prosperity to them, God. We're in their spirit, God. In their joy, you're sending prosperity to their peace. 
Thank you, God, for prosperity. How are you going to bless your people? On their job, you're going to give them outstanding knowledge and wisdom, God, in the name of Jesus. So thank you now, Father, for what you're about to do even in this place. God, as I surrender now to you, we surrender now to you, God, and we give you our all, that you may use us, God, like you will see fit. Do this now, Father, and we will be so careful to give you the praise. Glory, honor, shall be your but God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, we glory in his name today. Yeah. And as the harvest is upon us, there's multiple ways. There's multiple ways that we can continue to plant our seed. Yeah. We've talked about this several times, but just a refresher. Yeah. Probably the easiest way, and again, if you're like me, don't go in a checkbook, you don't carry cash. Uh, it's, it's push pay, so 77977, where you would normally put a telephone number or somebody's name that you have saved. And then in the message box, uh, EH give. Um, and then as it prompts up, uh, if this is your first time, then I ask you and prompt you for some information. The, the easiest way to get to Push Pay is through the website, which is embracehopeinternational.org. Uh, and underneath donation, you can go there. Those within the church, those things still apply. Um, it's up on the screen here, 77977, and then EH Give. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great way. Uh, and then it, it also, as you go into your account, it, it, it tracks and can tell you how much that you've uh, that you, that you put into there and so forth. So really a great tool moving into the digital age. And then uh, those that are here, resident, uh, you can also put into the basket as, as, as Kayla is around. Um, and then those that are not resident in here want to mail something in. The address is both on the website as well as on the uh, on the Facebook uh, Facebook site. And you can go and you can have mail in, or you can get hold of the ministerial staff as we go forth. Um, and you can, you can get in contact on how to receive those things. But first and foremost, I want to thank everyone for their giving. Yes, Lord. Uh, and for their giving in this season, because I know it's a difficult season. But as you've heard, Pastor, as he's talked, he's talked about this is a season of harvest. And so we're just encouraging everyone not to obey what we say, but what the Lord has placed upon your heart. Um, and then even if we don't have that physical or that digital seed to put in there, we just touch and agree and love in this ministry. So if that sounds all right, if that sounds like uh, something that, that God has placed upon your heart, we thank you in advance and we thank you for what you've already done. And most importantly, we thank the Lord for what he has done. Yes, Lord. Right? Yes, we thank Lord. him for what he has done because no matter what we say, uh, um, it's the Lord who provides. He provides the jobs. He provides the checks. He provides the bank accounts. He provides all those things in and out of season. So we give him all the yes, honor. Lord. We give him all the glory. Yes, and so, yes, so we just yes, rend our hearts onto him uh, and forth. Because here's the thing with God. He is so special that, that although he asks for the first fruits, the 10% from us, that reciprocal process, the things that we have not really earned because of our simple nation, uh, nature, the things we don't deserve and we certainly can't afford, he gives back. So, Father God, we thank you for being a giver and being a sharer, Father God. And thank you for meeting us at the point of need, Father God. For, Father God, your word says that you know that we have need of things before we even ask of it, according to Matthew 6, Father God. But, Father God, we're seeking first the kingdom of God and all your righteousness, Father God. Asking the most humble way that we know how. Father God, knowing that we have no right or expectation to ask of anything. But because of the blood of Christ, Father God, you allow us to come before the throne. So, Father God, we just ask you, Father God, that your hand be upon our lives, yeah. be upon our finances, Father God, yeah. be upon the seas, so that such, Father God, like Jabez, that as you enlarge our territory, Father God, that your hand will be upon us, that one, yeah. that our enemies yeah. might not devour us, Father God, right. but that we might have the wisdom to give back to your kingdom yeah. in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we just thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Amen. All right, just I want to do uh, two announcements and I'll be right out of the way. Uh, Sister Rosa and Sister Carmen, uh, the first Saturday in September at 1 o'clock, we want to do uh, new members training or teaching. And we can do that through Facebook, like we do for Bible study, or we can meet here. Uh, the two of you, uh, let me know how you want to flow so that I'll be prepared to do either one. Uh, if you come here, we'll do it in the fellowship hall. We can keep our distances if you like. But I, I have some classes that I want to undergo. And if we do it via Facebook, it will be the same as you're doing Bible study. Uh, you don't have to go anywhere. You're just at home, and I'm still explaining to you. Here, uh, because you are a member of Break Soul International. My sister, you have requested something from me, but the Lord hasn't released me yet. And when he do, we're coming. And we're coming with power and authority. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're coming with power and authority. I haven't forgotten about you, but it, I, I have to be moved. I, I just don't like to go somewhere because I want to. I, I have to go when he sent me. Oh, and yeah. I know he can do things like he's never done before. Yes. Destroy yes. yokes and break down burdens. That's the God that we serve. Yes. And so my timing is available, but I just have to wait on him. That's what that is. Yes, and I didn't want you to think I forgot about you. All right, so now uh, we're in closing. Does anyone have anything they would like to say, testimony, or anything before we go? Anyone, anyone, anyone? So if I can get everyone in here, please stand. She's moving, y'all. She's moving. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are and for what you've done in this house. I thank you, God, that you're coming and you're moving like never before. And as your teachers and as your students begin to go back into the classroom, Lord God, whether it be in their homes or whether it be at physical yet school, you bless them, God, and we can control this pandemic, God, that it not come against your children or your teachers. Bless them like never before. I know, Lord God, that they're doing it over the internet now. So equip your teachers, Lord God, that they have the patience to deal with the ones that are just not getting it right now. But give them wisdom, God. Give them understanding and give them a new way of explanation on some things in the name of Jesus. Because we're going through a different way of learning, God. Equip our teachers to be able to teach our children like we need to in the name of Jesus. God, as we leave here, bind all mechanical failure and keep us covered under your blood. As that demon tried to attack your people this week, God, bind him up right now and cut him short. That's what they're going to do, God, because you have proclaimed, Lord God, that you're bringing prosperity. And so, Lord, I want that prosperity to be received by your people. And I want them to be like Moses, would not be able to receive it because they allow something else to move them in a direction that was not of you. So we cast out that spirit right now. We cut it at the root right now. Curse it at the root right now, Lord God, that your people will be able to receive free. In the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Peace. Amen. 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 Amen.